beyond the standard model is to go beyond quantum field theory, uh, beyond quantum field theory. The preferred theory is uh, so far is string theory and uh, or M theory, and that describes um, that will be the candidate for a unified theory, and that has both supersymmetry and extra dimensions as uh, ingredients for self-consistency. So, uh, for both reasons, this looks like the right avenue or the, the most promising avenue to go. To, if we want to go beyond the standard model, guided only by theoretical principles, of course. Um, in a couple of years' time, we'll have experiments working in the CERN, and hopefully, we will have we will go, go back to the old-fashioned way of doing science in the sense of uh, being guided not by theoretical ideas but by experiment. But in the meantime, that's all we have, and we have to follow uh, the most promising avenues, and we consider this to be one. Okay, so before. Um, I start with the next chapter. Uh, any questions about what I had to say? No? <coughs> Good. So, supersymmetry. So this chapter is about uh, the algebraic structure of supersymmetry, so it will take us a while to start with supersymmetry itself. Uh, so we'll start with uh, 2.1, which is uh, <coughs> Poincaré symmetry. <coughs> and spinners. And I intend this, this uh, section to be just a review section just to uh, call back to your attention these main concepts. Uh, <clears throat> depending on uh, your feedback, I can go fast or slow with this section. And the reason is that uh, in principle you have seen this material in the symmetries and group course. Who attended that course? Who did, who did not attend the course? <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, who understood the course? <laughs> oh, the <previous> one. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, I will uh, just go fast. I will re repeat some of the material, but uh, faster, just to emphasize the main points uh, without making the, the the main derivations, because uh, that will be a way to to save some time to use uh, next, but please stop me if there is anything that you don't understand. Okay, so. Okay. So we start with the Poincaré group. And Poincaré group, we, we know what it is. So, so we start with a, <coughs> that's a symmetry of special relativity. And uh, we start with a, four coordinates in space-time, and uh, we make the transformation x prime mu equals to lambda mu nu x nu. Uh, <coughs> that plus a shift, and this describes the uh, Poincaré transformation, where this is Lorentz, and this is translation. And uh, the Lorentz group is uh, the, the elements of the Lorentz group is such, are such that they leave invariant the the metric the the so lambda transpose times eta times lambda equals to eta where eta equals. 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. And then zeros, that's the standard metric. And uh, eta is an invariant tensor under the Lorentz transformations, and that's what we use to raise and lower indices. 
<clears throat> I will, in general, the, the, the Lorenz group will have several disconnected pieces. Uh, I will use the one that is connected to the identity and what is called the uh, uh, isochronous Lorenz group. But I, I'll just, it's usually written with this uh, little arrow over there. But uh, for this course, I will just, just consider the SO31, and that, that's, that's a, I, I'll just, just for, for notation thing, I, I will never write this arrow, it's just to say that it's SO31. So that means that it has determinant one, that means that is that what the S is, and O is orthogonal, leaving invariant this, uh, this, this uh, <coughs> metric. Okay, and uh, the algebra, It's such that the, the generators are matrices M mu nu and P say, sigma. <coughs> the M mu nu generate the uh, Lorentz group and P generate the translations. <coughs> and the algebra is such that uh, P mu P nu is zero. And then uh, m mu nu p gamma equals i p eta minus p eta, where this is mu nu gamma mu mu gamma. And then the big one is n mu nu m rho sigma equals to i times m eta plus m eta minus m eta. This is uh, mu sigma mu rho. New row sigma Okay. So this is the algebra of the of the Poincare group. P's are the momentum, momenta that they generate translations as usual. N times P is N generate the Lorentz transformations. N Commuting with P gives you this. This essentially tells you that P transforms as a vector on the Lorentz transformation. So every, every vector will satisfy this by substituting here itself. And uh, this is the algebra of Lorentz transformations. Okay. Excuse me? Yeah? For the N, no, that's, that depends on the representation. Okay, so you will have, as the N will be a mat, mat, you will have a representation for, as a matrix acting on, on say, on, on, on space time. And then that will, I can give you the formula, but, it's, it's, but in general, the algebra is much more than the representation. So I'll just write the algebra, and then I, we will talk about different representations. Okay, that's a good, good point. <coughs> Okay, so continuing about the uh, Lorentz group. Actually, I have uh, just to answer your question probably more properly. You want to write uh, the matrices a representation for this. It's M rho sigma component mu nu equals 
Ai. E tá sigma mi. Delta rho mu minus eta rho mu delta sigma mu. Okay. So that's a particular representation. So you choose, this is the matrices, four by four matrices, to satisfy this algebra. Okay, so that's, that's a particular case. But in general, we will see other, other representations of that algebra. So you can have, as an exercise, just use these matrices and uh, multiply them and see if they satisfy the algebra. Very good. So we will use properties of the Lorentz group, and the properties of the Lorentz group are some uh, some uh, properties one is that the the group s o three one is locally related to s u two Cross two. This is important when we talk about representations <coughs> of the algebra, and uh, the reason is that we define, since we can define out of the generators of the of the Lorentz group, we can define j i to be one half epsilon i j k. And J K. These are out of the M's. Now I J K are going from one one, two, and three. So these are the generators of uh, rotations. So J I spatial rotations. Okay, and then we define the ki to be m zero i, and this they generate Lorentz boost. Okay, so so out of the generators of the Lorentz group, we can define the ones with the only special code. Uh, uh, indices that will give rise to the standard Ji, which is the generator of rotation. So this will generate the uh, rotation group ins inside the Lorentz group. And this, since it has a time component here, generates the boosts. And out of these two, you can define A and B. And uh, Ai equals one half J i plus i k i and b i to be one half j i minus i k i and the nice thing about a and b is that they satisfy the algebras a i a j equals Okay, so knowing the algebra of the Lorentz group, we know the algebra of the M's, then so we know the algebra of the J's and K's, and because of A and B are defined in terms of the J's and K's, they satisfy this algebra, and these two algebras we recognize as the algebras of SU2. So the, this is an SU2, and this is another SU2. And they commute, so that means that we have a structure of SU2 cr cross SU2. Okay, so this cannot be fully true. It's only true uh, locally in the sense that uh, it's the algebra that is satisfied. But you have to pay attention a small detail. Small detail is that 
A and B satisfy the same algebra of the of, of, of the angular momentum. Well, just A I A J equals to that. This is the algebra of angular momentum. <coughs> So this is, these are like rotations, and these are like rotations. However, A and B, given these definitions, are not necessarily uh, her, uh, Hermitian generators. Okay. So this is the algebra of S2 cross S2, but A and B are not necessarily Hermitian, are not Hermitian in general. And uh, what is Hermitian is the combination A plus B, and A plus B is J. So J is the real spin. When we, t when we talk about spin, it will be J. Okay. So, <clears throat> but given this fact that the representations are labeled by spins and spins A and B, as a, as a Two spins, but physical, but physical angular momentum, the physical spin is J, which is A plus B. Okay. Notice also that uh, on the uh, on the parity. On the parity, that means that we change the sign of the special components and don't touch the sign, the, 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 the time. You know what parity is. Who doesn't know what parity is? Okay. Parity means that uh, x0 goes to x0 and xi uh, goes to minus xi. Okay, so we change the sign of the of the special coordinates in a, on, on a space-time vector. On the parity, we have that uh, what happens on the parity, uh, <coughs> Ji goes to Ji, Ki goes to minus Ki. Okay. J, remember the definition of J has, is in terms of the n's that has two indices, so you, you change sign of the two special indices, you get back the same thing. So J is invariant, but K changes sign, okay? So that means that A is exchanged with B, and uh, <coughs> because A is J plus K and B is J minus K. That's something good to have in mind now because of what I'm going to say. This will have to do with what we call left-handed and right-handed later on. So parity exchanges A and B. That is one property of, uh, of, of, of SO31. Let me talk about another property, which is probably the most important one. SO31 is homomorphic to SL2C. SL2C is the, is the matrix of two by two, <coughs> two by two complex matrix with unit determinant. <coughs> and this symbol here means homomorphic. Okay. It is not isomorphic because the map is not one to one, but it will be a two to one map as we will see in a second. <coughs> Okay, so the the argument for this is that we can have so this is since a vector x can be represented as x mu e mu this is a four vector but also x, uh, I will call this tilde as a matrix, can be written as x mu sigma mu, where sigma mu's are a basis of two by two matrices. 
and this can, this will be equal to x0 plus x3, x1 minus ix2, x1 plus ix2, and x0 minus x3. And uh, as I told you, sigma mu equals to the identity and the three Pauli matrix matrices, which are 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, minus i, i, 0, 0, 0, minus i. OK. So we have. E mu is the basis, the 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on. This is the standard basis in, on R4. So this is a vector. A four vector has the four components. But these same four components can be written in terms of an arbitrary matrix uh, in, in two dimensions, two by two matrices, as a linear combination of the identity matrix and the three Pauli matrices. So out of that, this matrix carries the same information as this vector because they all are determined by x0, x1, x2, and x3. The interesting thing is that the, the Lorentz group, SO31, what it does, it leaves invariant the length of the vector because it leaves invariant the metric, eta. So that means. Uh, On the SL31, <clears throat> let's see how much I've read. It's invariant. But, but on the Transformation of SL to Z to C. We have that the matrix <coughs> X tilde goes to X tilde prime equals to N X tilde N dagger. But And it's a two by two matrix. Then the determinant of x tilde equals to the determinant of x tilde prime. And the determinant of x tilde, you can see, is precisely x0 squared minus x2 x1 squared minus x2. OK? So what we're seeing is that there's a, a map between uh, a four-dimensional space, time, and a space of two by two matrices. And the transformations on the, the four dimensions, the, the Lorentz group, are mapped into transformations of the two by two matrices uh, by, by elements of SL2C. This is the, the linear uh, group in two dimensions with complex entries and unit determinant. And, such that is unit, the, having n being unit determinant, the determinant of x tilde is equal to the, the determinant of x tilde prime equals to the determinant of x tilde. And the determinant is precisely the invariant in both ways. This is invariant and that is invariant. Okay. So, but the map is not a one to one map between the SL2C and SO31, but it's a two to one map. It's two to one since if we choose n to be plus or minus the identity in uh, in SL two C, this will correspond to lambda equals just the identity.
Okay, so two n's plus or minus the identity in two dimensions correspond to one lambda, and the reason is because we have two n's here. So n, you change the sign, nothing happens. Okay. Okay. So the important thing about this is that SL to C, the you want to study representations of the of of the Lorentz group. You you can study representations of the SL to C group, and SL to C happens to be what is called the universal covering group of SO31. That means that it's, it's, it's homomorphic, the, same, the algebras are the same, but SL2C is a simply connected group, as a manifold, it's a simply connected manifold, whereas SO31 is doubly connected. And the reason is because there are, there's a two to one map here. So, <clears throat> and so the one that represents, is more, is closer to, the, to what the algebra is, is SL2C, because this is the one that you can always exponentiate. Uh, you start from the algebra, you exponentiate to get the group. It's the simply connected part. The simply connected uh, group is the one that is more related to the algebra. So the one that, that, uh, that is the, uh, defines the basic representations of, of the Lorentz group will be the universal covering group, SL2C. Okay. It's, it's relatively easy to see the SL2C is simply connected. It's the, you know about it's the same relationship that there is between SU2 and SO3. SU2 is simply connected, and SO3 is not. And the map is a two-to-one map. And SU2, you can see that as a, as a manifold, is a three-sphere. And SL2C will be essentially a three-sphere times the, the R3. So the, it will be also uh, simply connected, and then SO31 is not simply connected. Let me know if you are completely lost or if it's completely trivial. Mm. Nothing? It's okay? Okay. okay. Uh, please, I insist that there should, uh, for me, there are not, there's nothing like a stupid question. So any question is valid. But also, um, if it is completely trivial, let me know and then I can go, I can just skip and, and, and let you know. Yes? The between what? Uh, I think so. Well, you have just like a covering space for different space, and you can have like lift functions from one space to the other, and I'm not really sure myself what that is. <laughs> Probably the same. The problem with this is that same. is that I don't know algebraic topology, so but <laughs> the, so, uh, but uh, it, it could be the same thing. But it's <laughs> yes. Exactly, because here it's the topology will be different. So of the two manifolds, and and and, and, and as one will be simply connected, and the other one will not be. So you, yes, so in that sense, it will be the same thing. Yeah. So, okay. Um, good. So <clears throat> the important thing about this is then then when we talk about the algebra, we have to look for representations of of SL two C, because this is the the person, this is the the group that is. Um, simply connected. Okay, that's that's the only. So, precisely now representations of SL2C. And uh, that's precisely the definition of a spinner. That's where, where we will see uh, why spinners are special objects. It's a, you have a, one is called the fundamental. The fundamental <coughs> is such that psi prime alpha equals to n alpha beta, where n is a two by two matrix of SL2C times psi beta, where alpha and beta 
R1 and 2. Then there is the conjugate representation. Where again, alpha and beta dot are one and two. And uh, for those of you who, have, uh, who didn't go to the symmetry and group the course, these are completely two different indices, alpha and alpha dot. And I will be using this very much during this course. So that's why I'm, I'm making a, a uh, discussion about this here. Alpha dot is a different indice than alpha because this object transforms differently than this object. So keeping the alphas and alpha dots in my notation, that keeps a way of seeing how things are transforming. <coughs> okay. And these two representations are independent. However, there are other, uh, other two, in the two what are called contravariant representations that uh, essentially are with the uh, indices up. And this is psi beta times an inverse, inverse beta alpha and chi bar alpha dot to be uh, chi bar beta dot and star inverse beta dot, alpha dot. OK. So these two representations are independent. These two representations will be dependent on this one, and we will see why in a second. Okay, so the invariant tensors we have that, uh, well, we know that eta mu nu equals the inverse of eta mu nu is invariant. under SO31. And that's why we use eta to raise and lower the indices. Here, for SL2C, <coughs> for SL2C, the invariant tensor is, is epsilon. invariant um, because epsilon prime alpha beta equals epsilon rho sigma times n n alpha beta rho and sigma and uh, since this is total anti-symmetric, so this is equal to, <coughs> it's proportional to the, it's total anti-symmetric, so it has to be proportional to epsilon alpha beta. And then the, the coefficient of proportionality, you can see that it's just the determinant of n. But since n has the determinant 1, because it's SL2C, this is epsilon alpha beta. And that means that it is invariant. So we can use epsilon to raise and lower the indices. I put a minus sign here 
to the, the indices down such that when I multiply both, I get the identity. Okay. okay, so that's important because now we can raise and lower indices with epsilon. Okay, so in particular, psi alpha equals epsilon alpha beta psi beta and uh, chi bar alpha dot equals epsilon alpha dot beta dot chi bar beta dot. <coughs> so where epsilon with the dots I'm defining it to be the same as epsilon without the dots, so it's the same definition. So it has one zero zero minus one. Okay, so this tells you that uh, these contravariant representations that we were talking about are related to the original ones by lowering and raising the indices by epsilon. Okay, that's that's the point. That's, that tells you tells you that out of these four representations, only these two are independent. The other two are just obtained from the other ones by lowering and raising the indices with epsilon. Okay. We're not independent. And then the other object that <coughs> We're talking about uh, their invariant tensor. The other object that uh, can be considered here is something that has mixed SL2C and SO31 indices. <clears throat> and that is sigma mu alpha alpha dot. Again, I can use the same alpha, but this alpha has nothing to do with this alpha because it has a dot. Okay. Please do not get confused for those of you who are not familiar with this notation. This is a completely indis different indices than th as this one. I could have called it beta or gamma, <laughs> but always with a dot to tell you how the subject transform. And <clears throat> I can sigma mu. is what I told you. It was a the set of the identity plus the three Pauli matrices. <coughs> and uh, here, this object, a way to see that it is invariant is that um, by the map between SL2C and SO31, we know that, that um, that x mu sigma mu gets transformed to n alpha beta x nu sigma nu component beta gamma dot n star alpha dot gamma dot. Okay. And uh, Well, the x transforms like a lambda mu nu, x nu, sigma mu. So from here, mm. 
<coughs> from here, sigma mu has indices alpha, alpha dot, and transforms as n alpha beta sigma nu beta gamma dot lambda mu nu inverse n star alpha dot gamma dot. So that means that you see this as a transformation of sigma. Sigma carries three indices. Two are two dimensional and one is four dimensions. So this is how the two dimensional indices transforms with respect to beta transform like n times sigma. With respect to gamma dot transform like sigma times n star. But with respect to the news, transforms like a lambda mu nu inverse, which is a Lorentz transformation itself. And all that gives you back sigma. So that means that sigma is invariant in that regard. So. OK. <clears throat> and uh, similarly, uh, for what is called sigma bar, and this is a, one of the very uh, confusing things. Please, this, this, this uh, lecture is a bit of a, a technicality, but we need that to build up and the rest. Sigma bar mu uh, components alpha dot alpha is defined is defined to be epsilon alpha beta, epsilon alpha dot beta dot, sigma mu beta beta dot. And this u is identity minus sigma. Okay. Okay, so Sigma zero will be the identity, but sigma i will be minus sigma. You, you use the, the, the definitions of the epsilons. And uh, notice that sigma bar is not the complex conjugate of sigma, or an, not, no, no, no dagger or anything. It just, this is the definition, sigma bar equals to that. Okay. The only difference is that is the way that the indices are carried, alpha dot alpha, in order to have the right um, uh, contractions of the indices. But sigma bar has the similar properties as the sigma. So it's, that's, we can use both in, 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 in what will follow. And uh, actually, uh, what will follow is that uh, f from sigmas and sigma bars, we can uh, build the generators. Of SL2C, which is. The generators of SL2C are sigma mu nu alpha beta, which is defined as i over 4 sigma mu sigma bar nu minus sigma nu sigma bar mu alpha beta. And Sigma bar mu nu alpha dot beta dot is defined as i over 4 times sigma bar mu sigma nu sigma bar mu sigma nu and that is components alpha dot Beta dot. Okay. The special thing about this <coughs> these uh, objects is that knowing the properties of the Pauli matrices, we can build this product carrying this. Uh, this carries only undotted indices, and this carries only dotted indices. Okay. And the important thing about this is that both sigma and sigma bar they satisfy the algebra of the Lorentz group. So that's, for instance, uh, uh, your question at the beginning. This is another representation of, of the algebra of the Lorentz group by two by two matrices. And this will be the generators of SL2C. Sorry? 
in a Gewasser handwritten argument by the sigma bar has its uh, first index to the dot. Uh, this one here and this one there. Sigma bar. Yes. Uh, it's, it's just conventional to carry the things in, in a nice uh, uh, way when you contract the thing closely the same way. So, so you have here sigma mu alpha alpha dot. Uh, you get it because uh, of the way it transforms. It transforms. The first index transforms with an n, and the second index is transformed with the n star. OK? So, and then the sigma bar with the first index, index will transform like an n star, and the second index will transform with an, n, with an n. So it's because of the way they transform. And then that, when you contract things, that, then you will get uh, the invariance is when you contract in the right, uh, in the, in the right direction. Okay. But, but uh, the, in, the, the idea. That's, that's a good question because that's precisely one of the points about keeping the notation clear. Why, why do we put dots and not dots? So, so we know when we write the object, we know exactly how it is transforming. So with the first index, transform with the n star, and with the second index, transform with the n. Okay. And that's what makes it uh, uh, invariant at the end. Okay. okay, so coming back to the, what I was saying, uh, sigma, both of these sigmas, they transf they they uh, sigma mu nu and sigma bar mu nu satisfy the Lorentz algebra. So I don't have to, to write it because you know it's the algebra of the m's that I wrote before. Sigma mu nu, sigma alpha beta equals i, sigma eta, sigma eta, all, all those, the terms that I wrote, the same algebra I wrote for the m's. Okay, before we finish, we have two more minutes. I guess you can see you're hungry. Uh, <clears throat> so that means that as a, as a, a spinner, sigma psi alpha goes like e to the minus i hat 1 over 2 r omega mu nu sigma mu nu alpha beta psi beta and chi bar alpha dot will go like the same thing alpha dot beta dot times chi bar beta dot. Okay, so this is what we call a left-handed spinner, and this is what I call we call a right-handed. Thinner. And uh, <clears throat> so the fundamental and the conjugate that will give us the, the two kinds of spinners. And uh, you can see, you can check that uh, in terms of A and B, this is a one half zero representation. And for this one, in terms of A and B, this is a, a zero one half representation, and under parity, as I told you, parity change A and B. This implies that parity changes the one half zero to zero one half, and that that's justifies the name of left-handed and right-handed. <coughs> Okay, and uh, in the, in this for uh, for the one half zero representation, the j i you can just 
now you know what, how to construct the Ji's out of, this, of the sigmas, happens to be 1 half sigma i, which is the, the Pauli matrices, and that's what you can see. <coughs> that is 1 half 0. And for the, on, uh, on ki equals to minus 1 half sigma matrix, whereas for the 0, 1 half, j i equals 2, 1 half sigma, and k i equals over 2 sigma i. Okay. So you can see the generators of spin in the, uh, is, is are just the Pauli matrices for both, but k changes sign, and that will give, will give us the 1 half 0 and 0 1 half in the, for the a's and b's. So uh, unfortunately, I ran out of time. So we'll, we'll, we'll stop here today. And uh, we are very far already in the technicalities. There's a couple of more pages in my notes, and then we'll start with, the, with something about supersymmetry, OK? Please ask any questions you have about this formalism, because we will be using it. So that's a, uh, it's, it's good to have it clear. <laughs>